Happy Monday to everybody. This is Michael with Mornings with Michael. It's no longer the morning, but we'll check on what happened this morning. Uh, what a great game in the Super Bowl last night. Uh, I'm not sure if you all caught it, but it was really a nail biter. Came down in the end to a key turnover. Uh, that was the changing point in the game. So hope everybody enjoyed it. And now it's time to get back to our work. So let me just share the heat map of the S&P. Looks like we got a little bit of a rotation out of tech today. Um, NVIDIA is up slightly. I, I think they got another price increase. Intel is up 2%. Qualcomm is up 1.5%. And ARM is moving up again. We'll take a look at that. Uh, kind of a mixed bag in healthcare. Energy is moving up. Uh, the UCO trade is starting to look interesting. So we'll take a look at that a little later. Utilities are up. Um, home services are up. Industrials. So that's kind of a look at the heat map. So stocks aren't for everybody. I realize that this is why I often recommend our annuity here. Our annuity, you never lose money, goes up, does not pull back. Whereas stocks bounce and weave with the market. And then we saw in 2008, they went down 50%, the S&P 500. Annuity average annual growth is about 5% greater than the index investing average annual growth. So that's the story there. If you're going to be in individual stocks, you really need to be in stocks that are beating the market averages. Otherwise, you um, need to be, should be an ETF or an annuity. And like I say, 85 to 90% people should be in annuity. And some annuities give bonuses on new money coming into the annuity. So if you want any more information on that, feel free to check in with me. So let's go to the news and kind of have a couple of, this is the stock that I'm, I was in before. Looked like it was setting up. We got a little bit of a pullback with some of the rotation out of tech, but we're going to continue to watch this. It's a San Francisco based company. So there was two earnings before the bell. Let's see if we can get this to work. Beasley Broadcasting, 124% earnings growth. The stock is at 85 cents. Um, don't know what to tell you about this. Operates radio stations in 16 markets located in Georgia, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Florida, Nevada, Delaware, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. Had its IPO. February of 2000. My darn screen always wants to shut down. And the other one is Trimble. Trimble Navigation. Manufactures global and laser optimal positioning and navigating systems. Earnings were up 5%. And they just really bounced off the 50 day moving average up 4.65%. Uh, so, short interest on the NASDAQ rose 0.1% in the second half of January. The exchange said on Friday, as of January 31st, short interest rose to about 12,544 billion shares compared with 12.53 billion shares on January 12th. 
President Biden urge Netanyahu to have a credible and executable plan to fix Israel's military operations in the southern city of Rafah. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was admitted to care late Sunday with an apparent bladder issue. So we wish him well. And then on to sector news. Lowe's upgraded to overweight from neutral at J.P. Morgan. It gaps up and it's on the high part of its range. Pepsi upgraded to buy from neutral at Citigroup with a raise to $195 after earnings noting Pepsi <clears throat> has been a heavily debated stock over the last six months after providing initial 2024 guard guidance at the high end of long-term targets at quarter three instead of quarter four historically. So Pepsi is up 1.47%. Tesla temporarily cut prices of its Model Y cars in the U.S. until February 29th, less than a month after the car maker cut Model Y prices in Germany. Tesla reduced prices for its Model Y rear-wheel drive and, mon and Model Y long-range by 1000 to 42990 and 47,990 respectively, representing a discount of 2.3 and 2% from previous prices. I'm a little bit annoyed since I bought much higher than that. But uh, we move on Unilever. CEO Hein Schumacher said billionaire activist and board member Nelson Peltz is fully behind a recently devised strategy to reinvigorate the company, even as some other investors remain skeptical. And the top stock is down slightly. Diamondback in Energy, Industrials, and Materials. <clears throat> and Endeavor Energy Resources announced that they have entered into a definitive merger agreement under which Diamondback and Endeavor will merge in a transaction valued at approximately $26 billion inclusive of Endeavor's net debt, paying board to approve 7% dividend increases, sees quarter four production of 273.1 MBO. So Diamondback is moving up sharply, up 9%. On to Duke Energy, downgraded to neutral for buy at Bank of America, and their stock still moves up today. FMC Corporation downgraded to hold from buy at Loop Capital, and their stock is up 3.7% today. Joby Aviation said it signed an agreement with Dubai's Road and Transport Authority to launch a taxi service in the Emirates by early 2026, and their stock gaps up. It is up 6.8%. Sigma Lithium said Monday that it has received preliminary financing approval from its project in Brazil from the Development Bank of Brazil. So they move up and they're on their low today, but up 2.63% onto financials. Mark Keta upgraded to buy from neutral Bank of America with an $8 target. They have their logo on top of one of the buildings in Oakland. So we hope they do well. Lazard reported preliminary assets under management as of January 31st, totaling approximately $243.8 billion. Lazard's stock is up just slightly 0.05%. Willis Towers upgraded to buy at Citigroup and downgraded Everest Group to neutral. So not much movement in Willis Towers. <clears throat> and Everest Group moves up, once you know, up 2.3%. So 
The Federal Reserve sent three notices to Citigroup last year directing the bank to address how it measures risk of default. See how that affected Citigroup stock. Actually went up 0.12%. GSK announced that the US FDA has granted fast track designation for B. Prover Resin and in investigational anti sense um, for the treatment of chronic hepatitis. And their stock gaps down on this news, um, falls to the 10 day moving average and then bounces a little bit. And finally, New Valent announced the initiation of the phase two portion of Alco dash one and phase one half of clinical trial and NVL 655 for patients. And it's up 0.82%. So that's everything on our news. So let's take a look. The dollar up slightly, 0.11%. Gold is down on that kind of move up. And amazing, silver is, looks like it's building a cup with a handle, or at least a cup formation here. It's up three days in a row. Copper. Our copper um, company in Canada tried to move up and now it's falling. Looks like it's right at its 50 day moving average. Southern Copper is up slightly. Freeport McMoran is up slightly as well. Vale is up a little more, up 1.28%. Rio is pretty close to flat and bhp in australia is up 0.42 percent look at our yields and our bonds pulling back a little bit here 4.17 and 3.36 pretty flat on the 20 year IWM said it was gonna hit our target on our weekend update. And sure enough, it has hit our target and it looks like it's breaking out of this 200 level. It's all dependent, I think, pretty much on the yields. If the yields continue to go up, it's gonna pull back, but that looks pretty good. The Dow Jones said we were gonna have a little bit of a pullback this week to 380. Um, it's up 0.27 percent. S and P 500 <clears throat> said it was going to pull back as well. And it's down 0.05 percent right now. The equal weight in the S and P 500 is actually up 0.65 percent. It's a good sign. Looks like it's breaking out of a definitely. Um, Kind of looks like a cup with a handle here. Here's the, the handle down, down to the 20 day moving average and it's moving up and now it's breaking out above the 160 level. QQQ pulling back slightly. We said we felt it was gonna go up on yesterday. So we'll see how it does the rest of the week. <clears throat> and the equal weight is up slightly 0.09%. look at the VIX. We got a big bounce in the VIX. Said it was going to go over to 15, but we got a gap up. It's up 6.88%. Uh, Pretty interesting. We'll see how that continues to affect the S&P 500. So let's go to our screens here. Up 3%. Super microcomputer continues to just 
beat expectations. It's just amazing where this is going. 309 kind of was a bottom over here. And we well, only had one day out of one. No, we had two days and I had a slight pullback and it just continues higher. Alpine Immune Sciences and a breakout here at 2104 and it just keeps on chugging. Arm Holdings had a huge range here, kind of closed right where it closed. The same area on Friday, and now we got a big move up today, right near 150. Palantir continues to move up. Airbnb kind of broke out here. Their earnings are tomorrow. Took a risk um, and put on, I think it was 160, 165. Uh, options trade here. So we'll see if it gets there uh, for March 24th, I believe it was. And we did not look at trending ETFs yet, but let's continue with the daily routine. <clears throat> What's up? Five percent on a hundred percent increase in volume. ATN International tried trying to break its downtrend. Huge volume throughout the last three days. Stock in Israel, Beamer is up six hundred and sixty seven percent. Just astounding. Video technology and image science software company. Okay, they've been just trading on a flat line and then they just a massive breakout. Cast Info Systems breaks out above 4669. No, 40, yeah, 4669. It's up 10.7%. Simbe Therapeutics and Gaps Up. Must be some news on some drug that they're working with. Up 25%. Clean Spark. We were looking at um, Bitcoin miners. Uh, Clean Spark and Cypher are the two that seem to be on up moves. They outgain everybody else. Cypher is up. 15% today. I think I typed the ticker symbol wrong. And then Clean Spark is trying to hold in there. We have Bitfarm. We we bought it up at 302. We didn't sell it. We just felt that uh, the analysis of Bitcoin, it would come back. And we're slightly profitable here. It's up 12.68. Mara is up 13.27%. Uh, One of the worst performers on a daily basis is HUT. And it's up 8.92%. I'm, I'm not sure if they just don't have enough servers or what it is, but they're kind of lacking some of the other Bitcoin miners. So that's that. We'll look at Bitcoin in a moment. And here are, we looked at some of these in the previous chart. IGM Biosciences, these are companies up 10%, 200% increase in volume. IGM Biosciences up 17%. Children's Place had a huge gap down, fought back, and now it's trying to fill the, the gap here. So we'll see if one if it can fill the gap and then retreats again. But it is 30 up 33% today. Another interesting one. 
that really fell hard last week. It's fighting back today. We'll see if they can fill the gap. And let's see. Let's uh, take a look at Ethereum first. Ethereum is up 2.73%. Let's see if we can bring up a real chart of Bitcoin. Just need to refresh this a little bit. Sure. <clears throat> there, here's our chart. It did look like it get went above fifty thousand today, and we got a little bit of a pullback. Yeah, fifty thousand and eighty fifty thousand seventy four dollars. Got a little bit of a pullback. Said we believe that this could go. Up to 60,000 on strong volume. So we'll just have to wait and see if we'll, we get that strong volume. Here's a five day chart. We got some pretty strong volume right around here at around 3 p.m. So we'll kind of see where that goes. We'll stop our share. Well, we um, our meeting got due to technical difficulties is kind of stopped but we're back online hopefully it doesn't mess up our recording today if it does we'll have two recordings up there so here we go share our screen again <clears throat> there's ethereum up 2.73 And we just continue to look at Bitto. It's up about 5% today. Looks like it's uh, breaking out here. Um, I guess it needs a clear 23.93 to break out. We'll see if we can do that. And on GBTC, it looks like it's getting pretty close close to breaking out here. 43.50 was a previous high. A little consolidation and now it's at 44.55. So this is Elf Beauty tried to move higher, pull back. So our shorts at 180 are helping out a little bit here. So we'll just see if they get the last um, as long. And GitLab get a little bit of a pullback and tried to move higher today and it actually gapped. And now it's at its 10 day moving average. I wish I had kept on those 70 shorts on the call options, but We'll see if it pulls back to the 20-day moving average and bounces. So we'll keep watching that. Not going to do anything right now. Our new um, company that we exercise this at three nine four ninety five um, on Saturday. 
automatic exercise, and it's up to 717 now. It was at 702 earlier, so that seems to be doing fine. Meta was up earlier, and then we are pulling back with kind of bouncing all around. Was negative a few minutes ago, now slightly positive. So we got 165 shares in Meta. And we could stop the share, I guess. Just kind of see if we can just share our portfolio. I think this is the one. Yeah, so our Tesla is pulling back a little bit today. Uh, GitLab, we just went over, is pulling back. ESTC got a little bit of a pullback as well. Still up um, nicely, a little, little over 8%. GitLab is over 31%. Globant was up a lot higher today, but um, Pulling back a little bit. VRT. We're trying to roll over five of the spread. So the spread option. We currently have it at March. We're trying to roll it into. Because the stock was at right about 62. We we're going to roll it to the 62, 66 spread. And then we're just going to have five of the open options at 57. So that's the story there. A little bit of a pullback there. BWAC, a um, little bit of a pullback, but it's in a pretty tight rate range. We'll look at that, that a little later. Zscaler, a little bit of a pullback. They're up, up about 40%. We have that option at 2.30 call when it had the pullback on the news of the executive. It's 100 up 115%. So we did take, we had two options. Once anything gets above 100% on the options, we take our profit, at least on one of them. Data dog is pulling back a little bit. We took off three of the shorts. So we have the 136, 141 uh, options still going. And we've got a little bit of a pullback. Uh, the stock is currently at, yeah, 134. So it's below where 136 today. Uh, Elf, Elf Beauty. I think we just looked at that. Um, here's where our shorts are on the 80 call, 180 call. Shopify got a little bit of a pullback here today. We rolled it on Friday. It was the 85.90 call, and now we. Rolled it to the 90.95. I believe it was the 15th of March. We rolled it up uh, one week as well. Earnings are this week. Rivian. A uh, little bit of pullback in the EVs today. So we got the 15 and a half 20 call. It's at 16.36. Um, this is a building stock. It's just something we wanted to keep in. Just keep watching. It's slightly positive. Um, and here is a beverage. Celsius. Supposed to help you um, grow your metabolism uh, while you're working out. Um, so has been a big leader in the past. So we put this on. Slight, slight little bit of a... Oh, it actually is up now. Looks like it was pulling back. So that is up a little over 18%. App continues to trend well. It's up 64%. We only had, we added one option on Friday to app from four to five. Forty-five dollar call is right now at 47. Earnings are upcoming, so we'll have to watch and see if we want to take some of those off. Just get some profit um, right before earnings. Square. I pulled back last week and now it's trending higher. We got the 68 February option for earnings play. I'll continue to watch that one. We looked at Meta, Kava. Uh, we still have those 10 
options that you want to put on. I think um, this is a 54. Well, I'll close this one as soon as we're done recording. And Airbnb is the one we just put on, slightly down 8%. So we'll see if this can keep trending. And here's MicroStrategy, 110 shares. We bought 10 at 493. And then we put on the option at 495 and just let it exercise. So we have an average cost of 494.84. So there we go. That's a look at our portfolio. And let's go back to our screen. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of the ETFs. Um, financials keep moving, moving on up. We'll see if it can break out of, of this hot highest high over here. Looks like it's 39.34. Getting pretty close to that. Energy is moving up a little over 1% today. USO uh, starting to form a, at least a cup here. So we'll see if it develops in handle or if it just breaks out here. Utilities are moving up today. Big move. Up nearly 1%. Real estate. Got a little bit of a pullback here. Biotech. Wow. Two big moves in a day. Actually, three of them. One, two, three. Up a little over 2% today. Type the wrong key. Our other biotech is not trending as well, but it is at 0.82%. Our software, so we got a little bit of a pullback there, down 1%. Technology, about the same, 0.8. Infrastructure just keeps soaring on up, up another 0.58%. Our semiconductor index is down ever so slightly. NVIDIA tried to move higher and then sold off a little bit here. Our airlines continue moving up, see if they can get above 20. Out of the office, gapped up. I think Expedia's move and Airbnb's move helped it quite a bit. Industrials moving up slightly. Healthcare looks like it's building kind of a flat three days, three, four days in a row. Consumers. Staples initially sold off and is bouncing back up 0.66%. Metals and mining got a nice little jump there. Building materials bouncing off, got a gap up and then pulled back to the 50 day moving average and bouncing here up nearly 1%. Home builders continue moving up. And bang you tried to move higher and then sold off with the rest of the tech. So let's look at um, our ETFs. So that's kind of our show for today. Um, you don't really have one educational topic uh, to share today. Well, um, be prepared with one tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in and we will keep you informed.
This is Ben Mornings with Michael for information and educational purposes only. We uh, hope you have a great Monday. We look forward to seeing you back here on Taco Tuesday. So go out there, keep up your activities. Keep re reaching for your goals. And if we can help you with any of your financial goals or activities, please send a comment on Mornings with Michael on our YouTube page. Everybody have a great day in the meantime.